Who would have thought 20 years ago that our country would be facing the crisis that it's facing today? There are those who are trying to turn the United States of America into a socialist states of America. Senator Jason Rapert is my guest today. And we're gonna talk about this issue and what you can do about it. What will the righteous do? That's coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. In the scriptures, in Psalm 11:3, it says, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Our purpose here today and all week is to show you, the viewer and the voter, the difference between socialism and capitalism, the Democrat Party and the Republican Party, because it's not so much who you vote for, but what you're voting for. And that's what I want you to get today. We're not here to malign anybody. We're not here to endorse a candidate or, or offend any, any uh, uh, voters. We're here to show you, to inform you, to educate you as to the difference between socialism uh, and uh, the uh, capitalism, the society that we have today that our founding fathers established, the Republican Party, the Democrat Socialist Party. They I mean, they've called themselves that. And I've asked uh, Senator Rapert to be here with me to help uh, understand some things because he has uh, a vast uh, range of knowledge concerning uh, these things. And, and let me start out by introducing him to you. You certainly don't need uh, any more introduction. Uh, he's been a Republican member of the Arkansas Senate uh, since 2011, representing District 35. He's the president of American History and Heritage Foundation, as well as founder of Holy Ghost Ministries. And he's also the founder and president of the National Association of Christian Lawmakers. And I sit on the board of two of his organizations. And let me just say this, this man is invaluable to the state of Arkansas and to our national politics as well. In fact, if we could, we need to clone him and put him in several other uh, positions. But he's going to help us today understanding what socialism is really all about and how damaging it is, because that's your choice in the election. You're going to either vote for uh, the Democrat Party platform or you're going to uh, you're going to vote for the Republican Party platform. You don't you don't necessarily you may not like a candidate. You may not have a favorable opinion of somebody. You don't like their personality, the way they act, the talk, whatever. But you need to know that that person is representing a platform. That's right. So with that, thank you, Jason, for being here. And I'll turn it over to you. First question here. Um, seems like all of a sudden socialism has invaded America. But in reality, this is not a sudden thing. It, it's not a sudden thing. And I want to thank you, of course, for having me on. And thank you for your service on, on our boards, and especially uh, the most recent, the National Association of yeah. Christian Lawmakers. I appreciate that. You know, uh, you said, I appreciate your kind words. If you could clone me, that's what the National Association of Christian Lawmakers is all about. You know, when we set that off in August, we now have 23 states out of the 50 immediately represented by a state senator or state representative that serving our chair. You know, in Arkansas, we're only 1% of the American population, about 3 million people out of 300 million. But with the NACL, with the Christian lawmakers, uh, we now have leadership in states that represent 160 million in U.S. population. And we are out there building people that cannot be destroyed that will take a stand. You're right. This has not happened by accident. It's not been sudden. I want to make sure to, to bring you a quote here later on some voting, which everybody's in election season. But let's think about what's going on. In fact, I, I brought something specific that is at the heart of what you said, because I know that many people, they will say, well, times have changed. You know, we've just progressed a little bit. And, and as time changes, people think differently. Well, God God's word changes not. That's number That's right. one. And it is sustained and outlived. When you think about it, uh, the holy word of God has outlived most forms of government over history. 
Yep. Uh, our, the uh, United States of America is the longest surviving republic of its kind, which is a representative democracy. But here's what I want to share with people, because I know people are, are wondering and they're thinking, you know, what is going on? And, and you know, when uh, Brother Happy shares these platforms with you, he's sharing with you the Republican platform and the Democratic platform. And what you need to know is that most elected officials primarily vote with their party on major issues. So when the Democrats tell you that they are for reproductive justice or reproductive health, that's code word for abortion. And God's word says in Proverbs chapter six, it says, God hates six things, yea, seven are an abomination, and one of them are hands that shed innocent blood. There was a pastor down in Florida who put up a sign at his church and said, how can you go vote for Democrats on Tuesday and come in and sing, oh, how I love Jesus on <laughs> Sunday? And, yeah. and again, we, it, it does seem humorous, but friends, it's really serious because yeah. when you are going and voting for the Democrat Party platform, you are voting for abortion. That's right which is clearly against God's Word. You are voting for homosexual marriage, which is clearly against God's Word. And if you believe in religious freedom and the ability to have faith, you're voting against those when you vote for that platform. So, so you're not, excuse me, you're not just voting for entitlement programs, no. free education, free tuition. You're not and voting for free health care. You're not, you're not just voting for all those enticements. You're voting to kill babies. You, you really are. You know, Governor Huckabee, which sits on the board with us, he said it very plainly. This is not a decision in 2020 between Republican and Democrat anymore, or just uh, simply liberal or conservative. You have a situation where one party has embraced things that are evil. Right and the other party is trying to uplift goodness. I want to share these with you real quick okay. because this absolutely uh, rips the blinders off of people. Friends, if, if you're one of these people out here that has, has said that you think it's just this change that's just happened, I, when I found this happy, this is a copy of something that was read into the congressional record in 1963. Congressman Herlong Jr. of Florida, it's spelled H-E-R-L-O-N-G, he went in and he read, he put into the congressional record these 45 goals that were the communist goals to take over the United States of America. 1963, which by the way, think about it, 62, the federal courts were weaponized and they went after prayer. Yep. 63, they went after the Bible these goals come to the fore. I'm not going to read all 45 of them. In fact, I, when I'm asked to come to churches and they ask me, I go through these in one service and show them. And here I want to give you a few because it absolutely, the, the, the light bulbs go off in people's head to realize somebody wrote this down. Mm -hmm. Somebody made a plan for what you're seeing today. Here's just some of them. Let me jump to some that you will immediately recognize. Here is number uh, 15, capture one or both of the political parties in the United States. Now, I want to ask you, hmm. when you hear AOC speak or Nancy Pelosi speak, or you look at what they're doing in New York and in California, and you see they are openly socialist. Who has been the darling of the Democrat Party? Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. Poor old Bernie, though, they always get him right to the point he's about to be their presidential nominee. Then they jerk it away from him because they still know that they've got to lie to you to be able to convince you of what, what uh, they want to accomplish. So they have captured one or both of the political parties. Uh, another one, get control of the schools. Use them as transmission belts for socialism. Now, this was a goal of the Communist Party read into the congressional record in 1963. Let me just hit some of them. Infiltrate the press. Mm -hmm. Get control of editorial writing. What did they do to Senator Tom Cotton in the New York Times? They had a fit. Somebody lost their job because he simply wrote a, an editorial that they didn't agree with. So they want to control what people are hearing and opinion. 21, gain control of key positions in radio and TV. What have we seen? You can't even get a, a, a moderator for the presidential debates yeah. that seems neutral, yeah. Brother Happy. Here's a few of them really quick. 
eliminate all laws governing obscenity by calling them censorship and violations of free speech. Number 25 out of the 45, break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography, obscenity in books and magazines, radio, TV, present homosexuality, degeneracy and promiscuity as normal, natural and healthy. Let me tell you something, friend. <laughs> There's nothing normal about homosexuality. When you put, if you were to put homosexuals, and I know people will not like this, but I'm trying to speak to you today as a brother in Christ, right. to my friends in Christ. Listen, if you were to put homosexuals only on an island, they would become extinct. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They would all live it. They cannot procreate. Right. That's not normal. Right. God said He made male and female in the image of God, and he, he, he ordained that they come together and become one, and that we multiply right. and procreate and fill right. the earth. There's nothing normal about that. Right. It's actually abnormal. Yeah. And there's only a small percentage. Only, uh, there's only a very, there's only 15% of the nations out of 195 in the world, only 15% of them outright normalize this, this. And it's something that people don't understand. Number 27 infiltrate the churches and replace revealed religion with social religion. Mm. Discredit the Bible and emphasize the need for intellectual maturity that does not need a religious crutch. This is why that socialism and communism, and may I say the Democrat Party that has tried to say that we should absolutely take out uh, references to God out of our Pledge of Allegiance, that we should no longer use uh, when we have people under oath, Brother Happy, they said they didn't want them to say under God, that, that uh, we swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. They want to take that out of there. 28, eliminate prayer or any phase of religious expression in the schools. They've done that. Yeah. They also, now this one is interesting because Ruth Bader Ginsburg just passed away. 29, discredit the American Constitution by calling it inadequate, old fashioned, out of step with modern needs. Do you know that Ruth Bader Ginsburg actually is on record speaking to say when she was asked about the best constitutions that could be used for a new country, she basically relegated the, our Constitution as problematic in some regards? It's not by accident, friends. These are plans that were there. I could go on and on here. It says to dis, oh, you'll love this one. <laughs> Discredit and eventually dismantle the FBI. Oh. Now, what's happening on your yeah. television screens that have played out for the last few years? And right now, the FBI has been discredited because of people that have been politicized and weaponized yep. inside. And the last one, discredit the family as an institution, encourage promiscuity. The other thing, and I, again, there's 45 laid out. One of their goals is to tear down statues and public art in our cities and replace them with meaningless, shapeless things. And Brother Happy, it's not Republicans that are donning black masks and bats and batons and sometimes firearms and taking over cities in the United States and burning buildings damaging vehicles, scaring people, intimidating people. And I am just amazed that the American people are not standing up to say, stop this. Yes. And this, I pray they do it to polls. This, this is all evidenced. It's proven. This, uh, George Soros, who was a Hungarian Jew, uh, is giving millions and millions of dollars to destroy America. Mm -hmm. And it's called rent a mob. Mm -hmm. Now we have some videos Mm -hmm. Here, here's one of them right here. Here is the um, Ferguson riots funded by George Soros, and um, our uh, go-to person is Bill Federer. Watch this, and we'll be right back. You have groups coming in, and we know there's George Soros. I grew up 30 minutes from Ferguson, and 99% uh, of the people in Ferguson were not rioting. They were brought in by more Missourians organizing for reform and empowerment that got $33 million from George Soros. 
They did training in inner city churches on how to lock arms and block highways and even practice doing emotional speeches when they shoved the camera in your face. And they would teach them the, the country is your audience, not the person in front of you. And then they, they rioted. And then they were promised $5,000 a person for rioting. And they weren't getting paid. So they went to the Moore headquarters and they took it over and they started a hashtag cut the check campaign and it made local news. The city council talked about it. Finally, they hurried up and paid them off. But it was a rent to mob and they moved them to Baltimore, to Milwaukee, to, to North Carolina. What we're seeing is one of these operations. I was in Emporia, Kansas last week and they said, yeah, we had a pallet of bricks dropped off right where they were planning a riot. And the, enough people got upset that they stopped it. But you, you don't have pallets of bricks dropped off unless somebody's organizing. We already know there are people in the Department of Justice that do not like our president and in the CIA and the FBI that do not like our president. And they've been trying for four years now to get Russia collusion, and everything. It's not working. Again, the purpose for this week's broadcast and Senator Rapert is here to help me is to let you know the platform that these candidates stand on, because when you vote for a candidate, you're voting for their platform. Now, you mentioned a while ago about the uh, um, the bricks, if I can use that term, in the uh, uh, communist um, wall to destroy America. Right. And <clears throat> listen to this. This is the preamble to the Democrat platform. It says, America is an idea. Well, my brother and sister, communism is an idea. Socialism is an idea. Vegetarianism is an idea. America is more than just an idea. But listen to the rest of this. An idea that has endured and, in, and evolved, which means... It's subject to change. Right. That's what progressives do. So to the Democrat Party, it makes no difference what the Constitution says. We can revise it and make it say something else. That's the Democrat Socialist Party. Now, listen to the Republican uh, preamble here. It's very different. It says, we believe in American exceptionalism. We believe the United States of America is unlike any nation on the earth. We believe in the constitution of our founding fathers as our founding document. We believe the constitution is our enduring covenant. Do you understand the difference between covenant and an idea? It says we believe that people are the ultimate resource and that the people, not the government, are the best stewards of our country's God-given natural resources. You won't find that language in the Democrat platform. Now, uh, again, I know we have both Democrat, Republican, and other, quote, party affiliates that watch VTN. We love everybody. We, we're ministering to mainstream America. But you have got to be honest and acknowledge what these platforms stand for and unfortunately, Senator, in our schools, we don't teach children anymore about no. these things. We don't teach civil government. We don't, and the families today don't teach it. Yeah, I agree with that. I, the, the clip that you showed, I wanted to make mention, but since he mentioned Ferguson, <clears throat> number 19 of the 45 goals that the communists had, number 19 is use student riots Mm -hmm. to foment public protests against programs or organizations which are under communist attack. And that's what they're doing. They have now taken this to another level that we have not seen. That's right. And, and as you say, the difference in the party platforms, and I want to speak to that a minute. There's an old saying here in Arkansas for the past 20, 30 years here that I ran into when people would talk about the differences in the parties. They would say, now look, I'm an Arkansas Democrat. Yeah. As if that clause <laughs> somehow took away everything that the platform says. And so what I would run into, uh, Pastor, is when I would be out on the campaign trail, especially in 2010, I was the first Republican elected to my district since the Civil War, okay? Wow. This was before the Republicans took over the majority. Now, Arkansans know Democrats controlled our state for 138 years. 
it was until 2012 was the first time since Reconstruction that the Democrats had a majority in the Arkansas legislature. So I would run into people happy. People that are watching this television may be the same way. And they say, well, now look, son, I love you. And they liked that I played the fiddle. I, play, I love playing the fiddle. That's the Arkansas state instrument. And they say, I love all that, but I just can't vote for a Republican. And I'd look at them and I'd say, well, I, I didn't know you were for abortion. <laughs> yeah. And they, they would say, well, I'm not <clears throat> for abortion. And then I would say, well, I didn't know that you uh, supported gay marriage. Well, I, I'm not. I go to church. I go to church. And so I'm telling this for purpose. So I would ask them, I would say, look, if you went into your church on Sunday and your pastor got up and said, folks, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 1, and I want you to get a marker or just rip that out of your Bible. I want you to go with me to Leviticus 20, and I want you to pull that out and rip that out too. And while we're at it, let's get Proverbs 6. That's just not showing the love of God. Yeah. And, and God doesn't hate anything. So let's rip that out of your Word of God. And I just want to make it clear to you folks that, uh, and this is this, to think about this, that a pastor gets up and says, I want to make it clear. I was wrong about abortion. I was wrong about homosexuality. I said, what would you do? And I want your viewers to say, what would you do if that happened in your church? Most of those people told me they would get up and walk out. So I want to know why mm -hmm. across this country that there are many of you that say you're Christians, but you have more allegiance to your political party than you do your own church mm -hmm. and to the Word of God. And this is where I want to share this, this quote. This is Charles Finney. Yeah. Charles Finney said, The time has come that Christians must vote for honest men to take consistent ground in politics. God cannot sustain this free and blessed country which we love and pray for unless the church will take right ground. Now listen to this. It seems sometimes as if the foundations of the nation are becoming rotten, and Christians seem to act as if they think God does not see what they do in politics. Brother Happy, mm. God is omniscient. He's omnipresent. And I, I, I just, when I'm in churches, I, I tell people, I say, look, how can you go in a voting booth and pull a lever for someone who has pledged themselves to support the kill us, killing of innocent little human beings. How can you do that and then also think that you are somehow squaring yourself and honoring the Word of God? Now look, I'll tell you, if the Democrat Party, I've offered it to them. Planned Parenthood, stop killing babies. I've got no problem with your services to women. I've got no problem with that, but stop killing babies. They will not take that offer whatsoever. And the Democrat Party platform, why will they not do it? You know why? It's because millions of dollars that are raised from Planned Parenthood killing innocent babies, those dollars end up in the pockets of Democrat politicians to run their campaigns. Mm -hmm. And it's sickening to me. Now, when was this written, Charles Finney? It during does the not. Century? It does. Yeah, it was during his ministry. It does not have his date on there, but well, it was turn of the century. My reason for asking the question is, uh, let's say the turn of the century, that long ago. That long ago, and, and and here's the thing: the country. We're a country of the people, by the people, and for the people. In fact, there's there's a quote here from President Garfield. And so when you think about why it's important, he says, now more than ever before, the people are responsible for the character of their Congress. We are responsible for the character of the United States. It says, if that body be ignorant, reckless, and corrupt, it's because the people tolerate ignorance and recklessness and corruption. If it be intelligent, and brave and pure, it's because people demand these high qualities to represent them in the national legislature. We have got to a point where the apathy and laziness mm -hmm. has meant that Christian people have not got out of the churches, have not gotten off their pews to go and take action at the voting booth. Yep. God gave us authority 
And what has happened is we have not used that authority. And as you know, I've been begging for people to please stand up because the goals that these communists had in 1963 are coming to fruition through the Democrat Party and we have to stop it. And the only way, in my opinion, I'm not a part of the network here, the only way in my opinion right now is to vote for Donald Trump and Mike Pence to take a stand against those things. We, we have to make a decision for the platform. You may not like Donald Trump. You may not like Joe Biden. But it, it, James Robinson wrote a book years ago called It's Not Who, It's What. Right. So what are you voting for? You're, if you vote uh, Democrat Socialist Party, you're voting for abortion, homosexuality, anti-Israel. If you vote for a, uh, Donald Trump, you're voting for the Republican platform. You're voting for pro-life, pro-family, and pro-Israel. Before we uh, leave today, I want to put up the uh, National Association of Christian Lawmakers uh, information. Uh, NACL is is a historic, unique um, organization. This is an organization of Christian lawmakers. Folks, this has never existed before. There's never been an organization like this. And I was in that meeting in Florida a few months ago where all of these lawmakers came. I, I, Senator, I was so blessed to see how hungry they were for spiritual food. Uh, they're in a battleground. Yes. I want you to help. Uh, pray for and support this organization. Here's the information. You can put it back up on the screen. Uh, National Association of Christian Lawmakers dot com. And there's the number, area 501-336-0918. They need your support. They need your finances. And, and hey, if you want to see our laws changed, then help these lawmakers. Amen. We've got 45 seconds. We, well, we could talk for days about this. We could, but what look, do you have? I, I want to thank you, and I want to thank the people yeah. that support VTN. Thank you. you. You've been a blessing to my family. You've been a blessing to me. I've told you that, but I, I want to say thank you. And if you want to support something that's critical to the future of the country, keep supporting Happy Caldwell and VTN, because you make a difference and you take a stand that a lot of people just refuse to take because it's too easy to be silent. And I want to thank you and Sister Jeannie well, for what you. you do. I appreciate that. You and Lori are blessing and your whole family. And uh, thank you for being here today. And don't forget, folks, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever in the world that you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection, and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.